Just kidding, I love it. <laughs> Welcome back to the worm. I just uh, took a few days away from here and uh, as I alluded to in a previous video, I've been thinking about, I made a uh, lap around the state and hit, uh, I think seven Habitat for Humanity restores and stocked up on all my fasteners and all sorts of weird stuff I got. I'll show you, uh, maybe tomorrow I'll pull it out here. When I got back here, my tent was completely caved in because uh, we'd only gotten a few inches of snow. But one of the grommets ripped out on here on the tarp. The tarp swung back and then that uh, tent will not hold. Half inch, um, one inch of snow will cave it in. Bent a bunch of poles and stuff. So I just got it back together just enough to uh, maybe get me through the next week. I don't think any day we're supposed to have more than one to two inches. And if I'm here, whenever it's snowing, I just go over every hour and knock the uh, snow off the tarp, it'll be fine. This is uh, how far we got in the last video. Uh, we got that giant pine tree milled up, uh, made the frame for this thing, milled up a fairly enormous aspen. I call it enormous because it's as big as my chainsaw will cut, clearly. Not, not the biggest tree on the planet, but when it gets to like 18 inches, that's all I can cut through. The sun's going down right now. So maybe I won't shovel this uh, thing off until tomorrow. I still need to figure the layout of walls, where windows are going to go. I've got some uh, used windows to put in there. I think I've got three or four I just looked and I'm actually not sure on the number, but it doesn't matter. I won't use more than three. I may just put in two, door on the front nothing on the back so we can have a lot of shelves and maybe fold down uh, bed and then uh, windows on the sides it's such a small space two small windows would be quite a bit of light but what i really wanted to take a look at before it gets dark here i just want to see how much snow we got out here where my uh the rest of my pine log is uh, i think i've got 18 feet of log left so kind of got to figure i'm thinking i might just make the just make the walls seven feet high and then the sides that have the peak, you know, have to have some some longer studs or I don't really know. I don't know how I'm gonna put it together. <laughs> you didn't see that coming, did you? It's pretty out here with a few inches of snow. If it's gonna be cold, you might as well have it. So tomorrow I think I'll trim the ends of the boards that are hanging off the side of the floor there, get it squared up, get a measurement. I actually don't know what the measurement is exactly. As most of you know, I just build stuff based on the lumber that I have on hand and make it make it all fit together. And I can't really do, can't do anything, mill any boards over like 12 feet would be the absolute maximum. 11 and a half is really about as long as I like to go because the bars I use for my chainsaw mill are only 13 feet. And you gotta have space to set the mill on before you start the cut. So let's see if it's gonna be, one side will be like this. So I'd need like seven foot two by fours for this. And I mean, I guess I could go all the way up here, make long ones. Yeah, you know, I think I'll do a seven, maybe seven and a half foot log. That'll give, give me a bunch of seven foot two by fours. I'll do the other one as whatever the leftover is. I think it's like 11 and we'll just go at it from there. It's gonna be really fun to start getting this thing together. The other thing I haven't done yet is order one of these little tiny propane like sheet metal propane heaters. I'm pretty sure that's what I wanna put in there. I picked up, I have, you guys have seen on my shower, uh, my outdoor shower, my only shower, has a 100 pound propane uh, tank. And for me, I think it's like 100 pounds empty. And then, so it's a couple hundred pounds. It's just too much to move around, especially since I gotta get it by law. I don't think propane places can fill your tanks if you're not leaving with them standing up. And I can't do that in my car. So I got two 40 pounders that I figured I could probably tee together and use that for the mini cabin for the propane stove. I think that's what I'm gonna do is that propane stove. They're pretty inexpensive. They're extremely small and that whole thing is only gonna be 10, roughly 10 by 10, nine by 10 and a half or whatever it is. I don't think I'm gonna insulate it. I'm not gonna bother. I'm only gonna use it on the worst days in the winter and just turn on the heater on. All I really wanna do is be able to get the heat up to 20 25 even 30 that's plenty warm for me i've got my sleeping bag if it's over 30 my winter sleeping bag i just sweat to death and when it's 10 or 12 or below i find that kind of uncomfortable like you have to have your whole face covered or your skin hurts in the morning so if i could just keep it somewhere around 20 or 30 in there which is nothing as long as i get the smallest propane heater this company sells i think it's like maybe a couple hundred bucks and as long as it can be turned on really low just to take that edge off 
that'll be fine. I hope that this is just going to end up being a tool room and for now, just for this one winter, I want to be able to use it on the coldest nights. It's like my uh, shower is about to cave in. I didn't knock that off. This thing's been up for almost two years. It's like one of the first things we put in here. Pallet floor. Got that burner online for, it's a huge burner, crazy high BTUs, and that's that 100 pound tank that is just too much for me to move. But this same tarp's been up here the whole time. I found it sometimes with five or six inches of snow on it, and it still hasn't come down. down. I use this right until I can't get any more water out here, which is, you guys saw in the last video, I had to drain the water tanks. And I still have the remaining water in these buckets here, which I will use for showers. They're probably frozen now, or nearly. Yep, they're frozen. But I can pop that out of there, slide it out of the bucket, put it in that pot, and melt it down until it gets up to 100, 100. I like about 103 when it's real cold out. And then just dump it over yourself. The only downside is that in this in-between time before it gets really cold and I can't get water at all out here anymore, you shower in there and if it's too cool, your feet stick to the floor. <laughs> but surprisingly, even if it's 25 degrees and you're standing out here naked, you get a huge pot of uh, 103 degree water, just dump it over you after a minute you're warmed up. I always get done with my shower and you can stand there and almost air dry. You're, it's like getting out of a hot tub, you know how warm, how long you stay warm. Any hoozle, one project at a time, right? Wasn't really supposed to snow anymore this evening, but uh, it's kind of coming down now. Yeah, I think I'll call it quits. You know, you don't want to overwork yourself. You should be done uh, working and in bed by, you know, 4.30 or so. Holy crap, it's cold out here. I should just let you guys know that uh, I'm going to try to get at least one video every two weeks out now for the rest of the winter. Might change when this thing's built, I have no idea, but uh, I no longer have a computer out here. I just started to uh, take this clip here and the battery is at 65% and just shut off. So all sorts of different uh, challenges once it gets below freezing, well below freezing. I think I might have showed you guys this last winter. This is what I devised to keep my uh, GoPro going. I had a knee surgery a few years ago and had to use one of those machines that keeps you moving. It was all padded with this. When I returned the machine, I kept the pad. Cut it up, put it in there, line that. Then I throw a hand warmer in the bottom, and then the GoPro goes inside there. I can do that if I am not taking a clip for, I don't know, say 20 minutes or more, I'll throw it in there, like if I'm going to eat lunch or breakfast or something. This is another reason you get slightly uh, fewer videos in the winter from me, is there's so much more to do. Essentially, winter camping full time. Keep things from freezing and... Uh, keep clothes dry, sleeping bags, all that. It's a lot of work. So I get about half the time during the day to do fun projects that I do in the summer. When I left here a few days ago, uh, this stuff, none of this stuff was frozen. Maybe they got a little, a few little ice flakes in the bottles and I, I came back now, everything's frozen solid. So I usually uh, warm a gallon up. So I've got dish water and drinking water. I usually keep one of each thawed and then I put it in a big cooler and if I keep it pretty warm, it'll stay like that for a couple days. Usually use it up before it would possibly freeze again. I, of course, have a lot of ridiculous thoughts in mind and then how I could keep water warm, whether it's fire, electricity, insulating jugs or whatever. It's just a matter of time, you know, if you only got so many hours in the day, so many days in the year to do all the stuff that you want to do. It's uh, That's so far down my list. I just assume melt jugs of water while I'm doing other stuff than take time out from like building a man cave to screw with drinking who cares about drinking water so check it out here's my uh, haul from the restore all used stuff these bolts are great because they're expensive you get them at the uh, hardware store and anytime I make anything like if I need to make a beam that'll go across more than you know 11 or 12 feet I have to bolt stuff together just like I did on the uh, gazebo that was like 15 feet and I could only mill 11 or 12 feet. So I bolted two pieces on the ends of it, through bolted it with like four or five bolts. And the, the bolts in that project were the cost of the whole project. I mean, other than like, I don't know, 20 or 30 or 40 bucks. So I got a bunch of those. 
few random hooks and eyelets and stuff. The cool thing at this place, their local hardware store switched the company that they buy nails and screws from. So they had all these boxes and they marked them like less than half off. They're brand new. Got a bunch of 16 penny nails. What's this one? 16 penny galvanized siding nails. Found myself a cool lantern for this place. $5 brand new vise. Some giant drill bits, like uh, two foot long drill bits. Who knows what we need those for? Then we got uh, 10 penny galvanized. Whole 30 pounds of that. 30 pounds of uh, 16 penny galvanized. And a bunch of other stuff too that I already filed away. I got a, found a couple $5 gallons of uh, wood sealer. I'll use it for something. I mean, if it was springtime, summer, fall, I would actually probably seal this floor before I walked on it, but there's, uh oh, my water's boiling. There's no way to do it now. The wood was wet and now it's gonna be frozen forever. Once I walk on it, there's not, not gonna be much sense in sealing all my black rubber and dirt and everything in there. You are now watching through a very nicely preheated camera. I don't know if you guys can feel the heat in there. I imagine you can. All right, let's see what we got to work with here. 18 and a half feet. 18 and a half feet. Yeah, I think that's a seven and a half and an 11. So if it's a seven and a half foot log and I make seven and a half foot boards, they're always not square in the end. You got to trim them up a little bit. So it'll keep me over seven feet, which means I can make the front and back or right and left walls, whichever, where the roof comes down like this. These sides can be seven or seven and a half ish. And then that gives me 11 ish. If I wanted to put a stud all the way up to the peak like that, I wouldn't have to go seven and a half, put a plate on it and then go back up. And I think I'm gonna take the seven and a half out of that end because that's that's quite a bit thicker than this. Even this, I don't think my bar on my chainsaw is gonna go all the way through it, but at least that even thicker log, that'll be the shorter one. It'd be easier for me to move. I'm not sure if I could move a 11 footer out of that end anywhere. Had to cut some new stands real quick because the others that I've been using for a little bit are still underneath that big old aspen log that I had to cut one piece off just to finish the floor in there. And that log is exactly the size of this. I wasn't going to bother trying to get it off of there in order to just move these over, but I cut these a little taller. I think that'll be a lot easier. It's not very comfy uh, kneeling when you do this, especially when you get down to the last couple boards. You're like got the chainsaw down at your ankles. Well, I'm going to see how easily this peels. Probably, I feel like the 
higher up the tree you go, probably less grit is in the bark. And this did fall on the ground. I didn't roll it around or drag it or anything, so I'd kind of be okay with milling it with the bark on, but I just measured and it is actually wider than my bar. So even if I can get, if I take the bark off both sides, I'll get, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or something extra space to get the mill through there. So I haven't tried peeling one of these. I don't know how it comes off. Oh, it's not bad. Better than that uh, Aspen. The Aspen's like uh, truly like armor around there. Wow, this is a completely different color than the other log, and I don't know what to attribute that to. I swear it was much more white than this. This is like a nice orangey color. Fascinating. I think after cutting that log, it went that fast and it was that big a log, I can say conclusively that those Granberg chains, milling chains, ground to 10 degrees, every tooth to 10 degrees, are awesome. The Aspen I milled in the last video went really, really fast. This went really, really fast for how big a log it is. I think that's all I'm going to buy from now on. I'm very impressed. Well, I got a few boards made uh, before it got too dark last night. Clearly we got a little more snow and it's supposed to warm up to like 35 or something so all this snow in the trees is gonna come down it's starting to fall right now I don't mind being out here in cold I just don't like to be wet and cold I'm glad I pulled my tarp out of here too so I don't have to sit on the, sit on the snow Just a quick little piece of advice. If you're gonna build a cabin just to use in the winter, maybe start it before the winter. The trees I was trying to get out from underneath five minutes ago and knock the snow off, I'm now hiding underneath. <laughs> it's the snow in. It's, uh oh, here comes the wind. That's gonna knock all the snow out of the trees. Holy cow, I did it. I made it through. That was, that was a monster. Solved the uh, question of the really orange bark too. I don't know, I think it's like inner sapwood or something. So there's the, what I would call sapwood. I thought that was the center of the log, but as you get further in, you can see it's only on the edge here that's really orange. So this top cut is super duper orange. Well, I wanna just keep milling. I got wanna finish that other log before I do anything more. Ooh. But I guess I gotta hook the wagon up and uh, move all this out of the way. That stuff is just, I mean, I say this every time I pick up a board like this, it is so heavy. Those metal slabs are 18 inches, one and a half thick, 11 or 11 and a half feet long. They are monstrous. Like I can barely pick them up by myself. You got seven one and a half inch boards out of that. So that's a, that's a lot of studs right there. I think I'm gonna go ahead and 
mill that other log up before I start trimming into these. Well, we had a bunch of rain last night, quite a bit of melt. So I think this is the last day I have before the ground is really going to freeze solid. I was going to double these boards all the way around the outside if I had the leftovers. And instead of doing that, wait until the very end and trying to put those on. I think I'm just going to put stumps under here. So I'm going to do four more stumps, one on each side. Because if you look at it, all the floor joists come right across and attach to this. And when you get on there and jump around, you can feel it move a little bit. So I think instead of wasting perfectly good lumber that I'll need later, I'm just going to dig these out and see if I can fit a couple stumps under there. There's no end of the crooked logs out here that we could use. And I think you know, all the time, all the time I've been out here, I haven't had a single day that I would call anything but incredibly fun. Every single day. And then I left for a few days and got a cold. And this just became a drag. I just took the whole, like the last 24 hours and just laid, <laughs> laid in the tent with the heater on. I am freaking worn out, but I think uh, day after tomorrow, there's supposed to be like a foot of snow. So I got some stuff I got to finish up. I'm going to power through, hopefully get this, get this stuff done today. And then uh, tomorrow take down my, my luxury condo over there, my big tent and switch out to a uh, winter tent. So let's keep it moving. And this is the, exactly the reason I built it like this. So if I want to jack this up, I can just take these couple screws out. Might have to mess with these in the spring a little bit. Maybe put a pad under here or something, but for now, I'm just going to see if I can compress it, the ground a little bit. Get the old lifter out. I'm listening to a little dollop today in my ear holes. Some, learn some history and get some comedy while I make a mess of things. Ooh, frozen down. Look at that. Isn't that great? Wow, that was a little too easy. Oh, perfect. Ooh, that's really froze to the ground. <laughs> there it goes. It is perfect. There's a little tiny bit of float in it, like a quarter inch, so that'll settle a bit. It's fun building tiny stuff like this where you can, as an afterthought, well, I'll just build some more foundation under it. That's what it needs, and you can do it in about seven minutes. <laughs>
Uh-oh, I'm out of hydraulic fluid. That's as high as it'll go. Hey, you don't need a funnel for this stuff. Just have to have a very steady hand, which I don't have. Good to me. This is a very scientific test I'm doing here. It's the two legged and then the one legged. If it passes both, then you just start building up. All right, let's build that last log before it gets snowed on. No, no, don't you guys worry. You stay seated, I'll get the camera. I want to stress you out. Oh, some things have frozen. I'm guessing the bar won't fit through this last cut here, so I'm gonna try it and I don't know if it'll make this cut or not. It definitely won't make it through the middle there. I have to grab the little saw and trim the sides of this off or something. This is the very bottom of the tree part that mates up to the stump there. So that is as big as it's gonna come. We did it, got through the whole thing. Made a little bit of sawdust in the process. Probably just spread that on the trails, get rid of some of the muddy spots, even though it's all gonna be covered in snow in a minute. Just so as to not crush the four-wheeler trailer, I'm just gonna do it in two loads. Got, uh, I think I got eight, eight one and a half inch boards out of that. At least from these middle ones, it should be three to four two by fours out of each one, although, a couple of these boards had a crack through the middle. See, there was like some damage to the tree or something, but still make a lot of a lot of good two buys. Make some two by fours.
you've watched a single video of mine before, you'll know exactly how I'm going to do it. I won't make you watch me cut and plane every single 2x4, but I'm going to go through this stack for, I know, probably got 20 minutes left to light. Man, these days are so short, but what is it, like one more month or something, and you're at the shortest shortest day, and then they start getting longer again. All right, I'm going to hustle and see how many I can get done before dark. Holy moly. I am totally beat. Made a pile of two by fours and then had some issues with the four wheeler shifting. So I sat out after dark, sat on the ground with the headlamp on for, I don't know, an hour or two, got the shifting working again and uh, came in here and just crashed and the wind's starting to pick up. Trying to get all this stuff put away in this tent that I've been, I don't know, this has been up for at least six months. It was probably longer ago than that when uh, I went from a winter tent to this thing, maybe April or May, I don't haven't put this thing up before the last snow because it just caves in so easily so I got I don't know six or eight months worth of stuff in here so I'm slowly sorting it all out little by little packing up these tubs got to find a place to put everything because my uh, mountain tent is the inside of my mountain tent is about half the size of the inside of this one that's actually a four-man tent right there my mountain tent is just two man or two and a half man so getting stuff put away Get some stuff moved out of here, drop some junk in the deer castle. And then because I'm still sick and feeling like garbage, I think I'm gonna take off for a couple days and I can stay here nonstop for months and months and months, which I do on the summer. Sometimes it's been over a month since I even since I leave here at all, except maybe go to the grocery store or something. But in the winter, which is the reason I'm building that mini cabin, uh, I can't stay here because I can't get videos out to you guys. It's too cold out here to run a computer. Even my jackeries won't work out here when it's this cold. So maybe get a little better and then come back and uh, put some serious time into that uh, mini mini cabin. Just as I'm packing this thing up, I realized this is this tent is done for, which is too bad because I just made that heat cover for it. And I don't think you can buy this tent anymore, but it's starting to get it's like wearing so thin and places where it's uh, gotten sun or like wear points. It got a couple little holes in it, so. I think, unfortunately, this thing's going to go in the garbage, which is it's kind of a bummer. Well, that only took a few hours to get it all cleaned out. Look at that. Move in ready. Who's buying? crispy. I think I could probably just tear it. I'm 
Man, it seems like at least five years ago that I built this deck. We had to uh, expand it. We, Tito, Tito was standing right over there milling. I was putting it together with logs. Got it all together, bought that tent, and realized it wasn't anywhere close to big enough. And this thing is huge. This deck is enormous. But you can see the seam right there. We made it to there. That was the whole deck. And I thought, yeah, we'll be able to fit it like corner to corner. Nowhere close. Had to add on another like eight feet to make it fit. <laughs> and just like that, we found the front edge of the storm. I got a rush. I'm going to go uh, set up my mountain tent on Tito's tent platform down there. I realized there are a couple of still pretty scary trees by my platform, which I want to take down first. Probably do that in a few days. Uh, probably get those down and then... Uh, run down take a look at those windows that i got down on the gazebo and start framing that thing so come back next week who knows might be a week might be two weeks but uh we'll get back to building this thing thanks for watching see you soon